and gentlemen, this is my extension of peace to everybody here. That my son, Michael, will be in charge of this. And if anything happens to Michael, even if a bolt of lightning strikes him, I'll blame someone on this day. Come rain, come sunshine. Switch my heart and do you, you will find It's love for you All I got is love for you Oh yeah, yeah. There's no lie I will hold you Coffee is important for you In the morning Don't take it after 12 I think I keep saying that Woo I like the sound of that Yeah, coffee is important for you Microbiome and whatnot. Um uh, antioxidants, <laughs> so many things for you people in the medical field. Today is an interesting show. Uh, first of its kind, we have someone very uh, special. I feel starstruck, you know? <laughs> All right, we have Reverend Walter Mwambazi on the show today. How are you doing, sir? Brilliant, my brother. How are you? I am a blessed young man. I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> Good to have you on the show. Ah, so, so great. I, I, I've been telling uh, uh, Clive here that we need to have the Rev on the show, no matter what. <laughs> I tell you. He did send the email. Yeah. And for some reason, I was like, I'll get back. I'll get. So he did well to call. He did well to yeah, call. Yeah, no, normally I have no issues with podcasts. We just said, no, let's, let's see how we can fit it in because it's the yeah. way of the future. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for coming. We oh, have a lot of interesting topics to discuss with Rev today. Mm -hmm. We have, um, starting from Tasila Lungu's uh, speech <laughs> to the debt restructuring. If you watched the previous episode, we discussed the debt restructuring, uh, explaining what it is. But today we're not really explaining what debt restructuring is. Rather, we are uh, giving our views on the whole debt restructuring arrangement if you're not following the podcast you can catch the show right here mondays wednesdays and fridays uh, on youtube and you can listen to the podcast on google Podcasts, apple Podcasts, and spotify so to begin with the show we are going to discuss debt restructuring last time we gave you debt restructuring from links lungo's perspective but let us listen to the president in france as he addressed uh important people let me also indicate here one of the lessons of our debt restructuring that is applicable to poverty reduction, to climate change, is the issue around speed at which we do things. G20 framework, when we took office 21 months ago. Oh yeah, ago, they are fast. <laughs> this discussion was already in train. Now we've been in office 21 months. Yes, we're very pleased that it happened yesterday. But for the countries that are coming after us, there is need to expedite the processes. So, uh, as we said last time, the debt restructuring is a good idea for those that have a noose around their neck. You know, the idea of being squeezed, it's like squeezing a mop that's dry and expecting water to come out of it. Uh, you will not produce anything. Rev, I don't know what you think about the whole idea of uh, debt restructuring. Truth be told, we are basically caught between a rock and a hard place. Okay. <clears throat> and I, I, for me, I find it absolutely... Wow, what, what word can I use? I'm trying to think of a decent word. Stunning. Yeah. That the people that got us into this situation can be, you know, throwing shade <laughs> on this arrangement. Like, exactly. because they, they basically put us here. It's just, uh, I think it was one gentleman i was speaking to the other day who said look if we just use pure accounts yeah in accounts you have assets and liabilities so our liability is whatever billion it is yeah and on the other hand in accounting if you have such a liability the question is where are the assets yeah so we need to do a stock take and find out what are the assets but the point of the matter is it doesn't even matter because now we're in a rock and a hard place and we have to pay and a number of those euro bonds became due in fact we defaulted even before the previous group left. There was a default. It was supposed to be 2020 November, if I remember correctly, yeah, when the yeah. first Eurobond was due. Then the second one was due, uh, I think, this year. 
So we were in a really bad place and yeah. they were both very big euro bonds. And the worst part is it was money borrowed from the open market. So it wasn't even these special facilities that they have. And I'm not a fan of the World Bank or the IMF, but I'm just saying they have lower rate loans compared to where we went to borrow. So when the previous regime came into power, they found mm -hmm. a clean slate, they found a good credit rating. It meant we're open season. And of course, <laughs> they immediately borrowed left, right, center, the top and bottom and got <laughs> us into the mess we're in. So for me mm. to, for them to be turning around and saying, we should have done whatever they're trying to say is for me pretty, I won't use the words because of the <laughs> office I have. So, so, yes, so the yes. bottom line is we had no option, you know, like even from a, from an economic standpoint, we're in a very bad place because even if you talk about now, you know, we have, Sugilite or whatever they call these minerals or whatever it is. We, mm. we have these things. Yes, maize, we can sell it to Congo or whatever. Yeah, it's true. We can raise the money. But the problem is, even as you're coming up with that, those ideas, your obligations are due as you speak. Yeah. yeah so so yeah. so so it's not like no uh first in India first in the Vashu guy if we can we can balance and then in <laughs> No. You they already gave you a time for balance and now pay us. <laughs> we yeah. want our money. Yeah. So that's the situation we're in. So they had to get into this deal and it was a rough one and, and I'm not impressed by it, but it's far better than mm. where we were. So what 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 parts of this deal are you not impressed by? The whole 10 years of of sitting around waiting for that loan yeah. and just paying the interest. I, I wish there was a way we could get around that. But you know what? We needed the breathing space. Yeah. Because the truth is that now that we have breathing space, we can now say, okay, so what can we do in mm. this period so that we actually start dismantling the the the, the, the principle? Yeah. Not yeah. just the interest. The, the interest. Yes. Yeah. What can we do? Yes, we've been given these 10 years. What can we do in 10 years? But what do you think? So far, has the government shown us uh, capability to do something with this space we've been given? I, 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 you know what? The challenge... I know that, this is a tricky question yes, I'm asking you yes. because you, you almost have to pick a side. But <laughs> yeah, true. No, but it's not even yes. about picking a side. It's just talking reality. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, the current regime, especially in the form of our president, yeah. is a transformative leader. Okay. But the challenge he has is he's, he's dealing with a conformed system. Yeah. The system is old wine. Ah, oh, sorry, it's old wine skin. Old wine skin. New and wine, old wine skin. is the wine. <laughs> so, so, so it's a real challenge. I mean, you, you don't, it's not rocket science. Just go to any government institution today. And I, okay, the institutions are even trying. But just go to any, you know, typical civil service today, you still have the same problems. Yeah. Look look at the various service providers. It's still the same problem. Look at the staff and their attitude. Same problem. So mm -hmm. we, we, we're talking about a man who's talking very, very lofty ideas, but he, he still has to deal with a people that said government young and need it. <laughs> That's the attitude. <laughs> yeah. And look at, look at the current situation. I mean, good example. Every and and you'd think that when this new government came, it would change. Every local government minister has tried to get rid of steel vendors, yeah, including yeah. the current, and even yeah. he was stopped. Yeah. So so you see that even they, even if they are effecting change, they are still very careful in how it's done. It's still mm. looking to say, what can I? Because for me, if he had to go radical and do and give Zambia what we need, yeah. he will not win twenty twenty six. So I that's so. always yeah. the challenge with the situation. It's have. also about trying to ensure. Yeah. So, 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 so my prayer is that even as we continue with him and he does what he does, he'll be one of those leaders that's going to give Zambia what it needs, work it out so well in this first term yeah. that 2026 will automatically take care of itself and then now give us the harder stuff in 2026 <laughs> going to 2031. <laughs> so that we really see Zambia change. But yeah. for me, this is what I see for our president. He's going to be one of those presidents who will be appreciated after he leaves. After yeah. he leaves. Okay. Like okay. he's going to be another Monawasa as well. Oh, Monawasa. Because if yeah. you follow Monawasa, no one liked him. During when, the, yes. I, I remember, you know, I was at a school. At the time I was in, in, uh, 
I think junior secondary or primary school mm. must have been junior secondary school. I was at a school along Independence Avenue. Uh, if you guys know it, you can leave it in the comments. I was at uh, a school along Independence Avenue, and there was a truck that passed one time, and people were throwing cabbages. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and it was the the, the, the the previous regime. Exactly. They were the ones yeah. that used to call him cabbage. <laughs> cabbage, cabbage. Yeah, but so when he touched. died, yeah, no, everybody <laughs> missed him. I mean, I still remember his statement that I am not cabbage. I'm steak. <laughs> In his slur, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. No, 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 I am. I'm, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, anyway, so he was only appreciated after he passed on because by mm. the time when he left, I think him, Magande, that whole team did a phenomenal job. Yeah. RB really came and ate very good fruit. He rode on the achievements of, of, of one of us. I, I, I bet it also assisted in his winning. Yeah, yeah, elections. absolutely, yeah. absolutely, because he was. But, 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 of course, Zambia, Zambia. So we still think there might <laughs> the have song. been some hanky panky. <laughs> yes, I still remember. <laughs> Vovoy, Vovoy. <laughs> Do you know he did? He actually did something interesting after he, after he left power, and um, he was he was helping the PF campaign. Yeah, yeah, true. And uh, there was a place in Kabwe that he went to, you know, a PF rally. Yeah. And so people were wondering, ah, what is this man doing here? Uh, you know, he's from a different party. And he was like, Mukaribora Podabo Shim. He was a classic. I just even your poly. Yeah. You know, that was a classic man. And you know what? The, the, the 2011, I know it really hit him hard. Mm. But um, when, when, when Michael Sutter came on board, whom, whom I really liked, at yeah. the time um i wish he had a chance to finish his term i wish he had a chance to play out whatever was going on in his head because i think he was the type of leader that made decisions on his own yeah and never yeah. told anybody so you never knew what he was, so he was just to executing a vision yes. he's never explained and unfortunately health got the better of him and what that did in turn is it prevented him from finishing what he started now because he left stuff hanging it was open season and almost as made him as, the worst president yes yeah yes because remember he moved idf to 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 state house he, oh, yeah. he did some 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 pretty radical stuff <laughs> but and his idea was like to stop the corruption to do this there's too much power yeah. I, I bet he was the one who introduced the idea of not staying in state house. I remember he gave reasons for not moving in for there. For a early. long time, and they had to tell him, Wanasa, yeah. this is unacceptable. <laughs> this house of yours isn't even adaptable. At least yeah. community houses. At least community houses. They're <laughs> <laughs> forced to be reckoned with. Absolutely. So they told him, no, 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 this can't work. Where are the commandos going to hide you? you oh, know, yeah, yeah, where yeah. Are yeah. You? In Rose Park, you know what I mean? <laughs> So, so it didn't work and they had to ask him to leave. But, but whatever the case, I mean, he did what he could, but he just, I always felt that he only rode for a year and a half. Oh, yeah. The rest of yeah. the period, he was, not, he was not there. He was very mm. ill. And uh, you saw the challenges that came after his demise. Because Scramble typical, for Zambia. Typical, typical of, our, um, of many of our African leaders, they don't really show openly who their anointed one is. And that, mm. and if they then leave suddenly for for any reason, yeah. it leaves a, a very bad effect. Yeah. There's always yeah. that gap. gap. Even now, you can see it in the in the in the previous regime now as opposition. They're now having the scramble. Yeah, the fight yeah. has become yeah. worse. Yeah. yeah. You know, Speaking so. of. Uh, anointed ones mm. we are doing a rebuttal soon we have a, a rebuttal section uh on the se segment rather on the show where we uh, tell the s stories of old people we've done uh, adamson mshala we've done alice lenshina yeah. and so soon the next rebuttal we'll be doing will be guy scott you guys can leave it in the comments what rebuttal you'd like to see us do uh, i don't know if you guys have seen uh, rev does something similar where he debunks uh, the stories and especially the Lynchina story yes I oh did, the Lynchina story do, I did a very detailed uh, when I did the first write up I didn't even know that um, members of, 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 of her church they used to be called the Lumba church but yes. now it's the Jerusalem church or New Jerusalem oh. church or something yeah, oh I Jerusalem. didn't know that no they had to change the name because for a long time they were banned remember yeah yeah, for, yeah, for, yeah. For, for decades they were banned <laughs> and so, they, so when they re reconstituted in 91 because when uh, Chiluba won mm. having an understanding of the history of the Lumpa Church, he did go to send a special team into the Congo to ask many of those who had uh, exiled in Congo to come back oh, following okay. those okay. 1964 clashes. And uh, the story of Lenshina is extremely unfortunate because she was a victim of the classic statement for which I quote. Yeah. 
history is written by men that hanged heroes. So it is always yeah. going to be the wow. victor's story. I think we'll do a part two of Lenshina's rebuttal and we'll have... <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll be very interesting. I have a lot to say about Lenshina because I know I've studied that, that quite a bit. I've read... Uh, the the the, the uh, blood on their hands by the late Kampambo Mlinga. I've also read the book by the district governor. His name is just slipped uh, in 1964. Some white guy. I also saw the special BBC mm. report. Mm. Did you hear that? Massacre. His name is just slipped. Search for just <laughs> slip. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, he was some governor at the time. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he wrote a very good account because okay. he gave the story of what happened. The, the, the sad part about Lenshina is she became a victim of politics. Like 100%. I, I agree. I agree. 100%. I agree. Because yeah. as far as I'm concerned, that woman really did have the hand of God on her. Mm. But uh, a number of factors came into play. Her lack of education. Mm. Uh, the threat by the establishment over her popularity. Remember that in 1964, she had a church of 150,000 people. Yeah, That was more than any other church in the country, including the Scottish church, the, which became UCZ. Exactly. So think of that. And unfortunately, that then, plus the fact that she chose not to support the government of the day. Yes, you knew. <laughs> that was our... Kenneth Cowan. Oh, no, that was terrible. <laughs> so, so, so already there were skirmishes between Unip, Kapasa Makasa, and all those guys, and um, and them. Okay. So, so th that's where it all boiled, because now these were like cutters, fighting cutters, and yeah, the whole yeah. thing just got worse and worse and worse. And then there was the decampaigning, where they started telling all these stories about, very untrue stories about her. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so a very sad, sad situation. Very sad story. Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving on, we have uh, a video of a press briefing that happened recently by one Tasila Lungu. Check it out. We have endeavored to lead a quiet life after our father left office in August of 2021. We must hasten to say that we are not objectionable to the law enforcement agencies making inquiries into any matter that we have constantly and consistently complied with the law enforcement agencies. Despite our compliance, it seems to us that it has become fashionable to demonize the Longo family based on the unfounded <laughs> allegations. Unfounded. <laughs> Look, let, let's, just, let's just deal with this as it is. Yeah. Number one, no one could touch these guys. No one. Fact. Yeah. And, and that's not just them. Mm. Every previous government beyond just the previous one that just left, every government going back, none of the family members were attachable. Yeah. And that's why you always end up having the same pattern that as soon as their, their fathers leave, there is a, a bit of gung ho go after yeah. them because yeah. they obviously end up with inexplicable wealth. And that, that's really, that's <laughs> I like, really I like the that bone inexplicable. Of yes, it's the bone of contention. I mean, yeah. we, we're all in business. We know what it takes to build a business. So exactly. over time, mm. these numbers just build and build. And then now you hear people have, have got cars, they've got property, they've mm. got, not property is an understatement. They have parks. <laughs> what do you call them? Gated communities. Gated you know, communities. You know, 12, these people, 15, they are practicing problems. Jesus' words, inherit the earth. Ah, you know, Jesus says, occupy until I return. Ah, All they have occupied. No, occupied. <laughs> so, so that's the quarrel. That's the bone of contention because people are like, eh, what business did you do yeah. to be able to raise that? So I think that's where the challenge is. So number one, no one could touch them because they were in office. Simple. Let's, let's not run around corners, go. I mean, because you try and you, see, I mean, you all still remember the the scary story of one of those cadres who went to Ministry of Justice or wherever it was, Central Police, I think. Yeah, wherever yeah. it was, and actually threatened to burn a civil servant, <laughs> and they said it on camera. Yeah. To Kamocha. <laughs> I mean, that's oh how, and, and the minister was at pains to negotiate. Minister was at yeah. PS, I can't remember. But somebody high up was struggling. So they, the, the, the woman locked her office or whatever or had to stay. I mean, that's the kind of gang ho arrangement we had. We, we're not even going to start the stories about how many people were followed to their homes and, and beaten up or 
or threatened or, or, or pushed out of jobs. So, so, so who, who in their right mind in the DPP or whatever would mm. dare question these people? Who would dare question it's these possible. people? So, and, so for me, mm. sorry to say, but for me, it's completely misplaced. Yeah. The, 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 and then the second bone of contention with this, if they knew they were not going to take uh, questions, mm. don't call a presser. A oh, yeah. Pr- presser yeah. is not yeah. for giving a, a red a red stain. A presser <laughs> is to take questions from the press. And you know, they ended with that, you know, you can have food. Like really, really like people drove all the way there just to go have food. To go and have some food. 200 questions, <laughs> transport refund. I mean, I think it's a bit of a slap in the yeah. face of the journalists. So if they needed, they could have released. In fact, these days with how things are, look at what we're doing. Yeah. This is going to be a release. Mm-hmm. All right. So we have a uh, statement that Mwebantu posted, uh, posted quoted. Uh, it says, police has disclosed that Daliso Lungu, son of former president Edgar Lungu, has been arrested with 69 motor vehicles valued at over 24 million kwacha, as well as money laundering of 23.9 million kwacha. This is a lot of money. These guys... <laughs> I mean, okay, look. Let's start with the 69 vehicles. This is the part I never get people, you know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> let me, and I, again, I'm not going to say this as if I'm any better. Maybe who knows if I was in that position, but, but honestly, what do you do even with 10 cars? Yeah. Let, let's just be real. Like, are you going yeah. to drive one each day of the year or month of the... I mean, 69. That's Six- like, <laughs> I, I never understand that part. I never understand that 69 part. Vehicles. I tell you, if he had four cars and if he had about a million, I don't think people would be giving him pressure. Yeah. Like, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. They'll say, okay, we're not sure you made that money, but a uh, million. Uh. Yeah. But, but 24 million? 24 million plus 69 vehicles. And mm. there's even more that has been... No, I know. Huge, uh, huge stuff. Yeah, so, that has been so left these out are, here. These are the issues that cause a lot of problems because then people ask and say, so what mm. was he doing before? Exactly. And then, and then how did he acquire this? What business did he do? I mean, it's obvious. And so the only issue now is whether DPP are going to be able to prove this. For me, I will not lie. I'm on record and I say it because I'm involved in the prisons ministry. I have no faith in our justice system. So oh, really? No. <laughs> the only way it works is when there's power from the top putting pressure. Putting so pressure. everybody's under pressure. And so they are really acting on instruction from the top. But if we talk about the justice system, yeah. No. I mean, he's got 24 million uh, kwacha worth of money he can use to get out of this. Oh, nicely. <laughs> nice. And this is Zambia we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. This is, uh, so his lawyer had something uh, interesting. Say, of course. The nine vehicles which uh, the company has, uh, that is uh, Saloid, Saloid Mo- uh, Limited. So the motor vehicles, they wanted to prove whether they belonged to Dalisolungu's company or a family company to say. So we have proved through our client that the vehicles were bought by the company. And we and I don't know what kind of proof they have uh, to separate him because also what I hear about this company is that it was registered and a few weeks later it was worth millions and it owned 69 vehicles. So now the issue is how do you separate the owner of this company? I know in Zambia we have this uh, separate legal entity. Yeah, yeah true. The yes. But how do you separate the owner of the company from the company when it blew up in just, you know, I've registered so many companies. Of course. <laughs> Rev, is, I know you have a no, lot of experience. Absolutely. In. And this is what makes this such a challenge. I mean, they can they can say all they want. I mean, at the end of the day, here's why I have challenges with the justice system. Yeah. When it comes to court, it's about what you can prove. Oh, yeah. It's about facts. That's why even the judgment says facts before the courts are as follows. Uh-huh. One, two, three. So, so the question is, does the DPP have the capacity through their teams to go head on against mm. the private lawyers? Mm. I don't think so. Mm. That's mm. why in the Monasa days, and I'm not saying it was the right thing, it just was just a waste of money. But in the Monasa days, because they looked at the capacity of the lawyers mm. that were in DPP and they realized this is going to be challenging. So they brought in the Nchitos who were running a oh. private company. They were cons- oh, they were, so that's they were, how they came into yeah, the Yeah, so they were literally, what's the word, subcontracted on mm. behalf of the government to pursue these so-called criminal issues. Just before he declared a nolle prosco on himself. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so, so the whole thing, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I, like I keep saying, I'm in the prison ministry. I know how challenging our 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 our, our law enforcement agencies work. Yeah. They, they they haven't got the tools. They haven't got the money. They haven't got the, the resources. They have the expertise, but many mm. get f- fed up and exit because it's so frustrating to work where you can't even get the basics. Just fuel and talk time to run around or money to go and pay for witnesses to travel. You know, there's so many oh, yeah. dynamics yeah, yeah. involved. And then, and then even the witness protection program, if a whistleblower comes out, what's the safety and surety of a whistleblower mm. in this country? Mm. Now, I've heard that they have, you know, with, uh, witness protection, they have um, whistleblower protection, but... Mm, Where are they going to send them? Months? <laughs> no, 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 I'm told they have safe houses, but... Oh, really? I, yes, yes, <laughs> I heard that directly from uh, law enforcement people. They do. Oh. But but the question is, which big names have we ever convicted in this country that you can really talk about? Maybe yeah. Mohan, Matthew Mohan, because of that murder. And, and, and you know, there are cases like that. And you when you look at the dynamics, you realize that there were very big people at play there. Yeah. And so that meant people were willing to put serious money to, to ensure the police get all the relevant evidence to convict. Mm. Uh, Matthew. Okay. So, okay. so, so okay. those that are, makes those, sense. Yes. So, essentially, most times I know for a fact that even when you report, you know, the, the first thing that they're going to say is, okay, but it's a report. Manje kai iti ambe process. Book we ipo. Pari. Pen. Pari. Okay, kaboye se book na pen tia. You know what? It's not that the police do that on purpose. Mm. They actually have no fuel. Yeah. Because there's no allocation for the fuel. So you tell me how they're going to work. That's why sometimes you find groups like C5 get to a point, and it's not right because it's prejudicial, mm. but they get to a point where they say, you know what? This isn't going to work. We're just going to go. We know where the guy is and we're just going to go and just yeah. have a, an altercation and then shoot them. And that's yeah. how the whole thing. We, we, ju- we just want to talk right before he assumes bo- uh, room <laughs> temperature. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is the challenge we face. Huh? Yeah. And it's it's really painful. So I, I, I don't see how a service with those kind of handicaps can go after people with this kind of money. Yeah. That, that's just a joke. Sorry million? to say. Yeah. How? He just has to use one. One. Million. One. Case finished. Yeah. Just one Actually, million. You'll be very... Pepper is a good. Five is a bad. Five is a good. That's why many times, and it's a fact. I mean, look, we're talking from what we've seen. Hmm. Many times the DPP have to keep asking for time in court. Like oh, the yeah. day of the court reaches and they go to their files and the files are not there. Hmm. This is many times what oh, really? Yes, files disappear. Wow. So, so now they are in a quagmire because now you know they have to present this evidence, and 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 they are waiting for that evidence, and they ask for an adjournment, mm. not because they are not ready, but because some files have, have gone miraculously gone missing. Some evidence has gone gotten lost. One of the most famous cases in this country, no names mentioned because we could be in trouble, mm. is a case of a well-known politician that was shot dead in his home uh, by suspected criminals. Yeah. And uh, it was about 3 a.m. or whatever it was. And that case later saw the spouse of that man arrested. Mm. Now, this was an absolutely shocking revelation because the story was that some robbers came in and then shot him dead and all that stuff. But then later on, the police arrested the wife and accused of murder. Mm. And I still recall, this is on record, there were two key witnesses that yeah. were being transported from the copper belt into Lusaka to testify in that case. And they had a road traffic accident and died the night before that key uh, testimony. Wow. And with those out of the way, who ha- who that can was testify? The end of the case. Yeah, that was even the end anyone of the case. who who had the who was willing will be scared. No, now well, now, now they were scared because it yeah. was the two witnesses plus the police who were escorting who died in that RTA. Hmm. Now I don't know the facts before the case. I I don't have any other evidence, so I'm purely speaking speculatively. Hmm. Hmm. 
if two witness, you know, it's the classic statement. I'm a movie guy, so I love <laughs> the movie Godfather. And if you can, you can roll the clip in your edits, but it's yeah. such a cool scene. We know that, uh, what's the name of that? Sunny. Sunny gets killed. Mm. You know, uh, Sunny had issues, but it was a setup. So Sunny gets <laughs> shot to death. Yeah. And so after he dies, the, the situation is very tense. And so Vito Corleone calls for a big meeting. All the heads of the families mm. were asked to meet. And so they meet and they have a conversation. So at the end of that conversation, in making peace, Vito Corleone makes a statement and says, as you all know, in his traditional, typical voice, <laughs> I, won't, I won't imitate yeah, yeah. No, no, okay, I have to. <laughs> he, he, he says, he says. We'll, we'll clip out a part that says, Doc imitates Vito. You know what I mean? <laughs> or Rev imitates <laughs> Vito. Yeah. Right. No, but it's so cool. He yeah, says, yeah. and I can't remember the exact phrase, but it's a powerful phrase nonetheless. So I'm paraphrasing. But he says, and gentlemen, this is my extension of peace to everybody here. That my son, Michael, will be in charge of this. And if anything happens to Michael, even if a bolt of lightning strikes him, I'll blame someone on this table. <laughs> <laughs> I love that scene. <laughs> By the way, if you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. <laughs> I just, it's classic. And, and what's, the, what's the implication of that statement? The implication is that there are no coincidences at that level. Yeah. You get the point. Yeah. It yeah. could have been genuinely a bolt of lightning that struck the plane. Yeah. But but the fact that there's so much issues around the, the case, yeah. it's like, nah. It was probably manufactured from Kasama. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to blame somebody and somebody's going to pay. Exactly. Because as far as I'm concerned, it wasn't lightning. So, 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 so that's the idea behind some of these accusations. Mm. We have to call a spade a spade. And if, if the evidence, if it looks, sounds and walks like a duck, it is one. Yeah. And if, if there's going to be no justice and if the whole thing will fall apart, for, for people like us who observe from the from the terraces, we will only blame one thing. We'll say the, 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 the usual has happened once more. Yeah. So one of my things, one of the things I really, really am looking forward in this season, mm. I want to see if there's going to be conviction. Let us see. Yeah. Let us see. Anyway, we have uh, some interesting uh, <laughs> posts we would like you to decipher and decode for us. If you follow Rev, I don't know if you follow Rev, but we have his uh, handle somewhere on the screen. Mm. We have a few XA proverbs. Correct. And I don't know exactly how to read them. I can read them. But I'll try. Okay. Well, no, Rev, try, try, please. Try, no, no. try, try. Okay, let me try. Yeah, try. <laughs> I'll try the first one. Okay. <laughs> An on's loyalty is tested when his guza sorry. An on's loyalty is tested when he has shit. Mm. And the guzas is tested when the shits clap. Yeah. So here's how, here's how they say it. Yeah. An on's loyalty is tested when he has sheets, exact. <laughs> and guzas are tested when the sheets clap. Oh. <laughs> 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 What exactly does that mean? <laughs> exactly what it sounds like. An own is a person. A man's loyalty is tested when he has money. Oh, yeah. And a woman's is tested when the money runs out. Literally, that's the translation. Literally. I think yeah. that's self-explanatory. We don't even need to get into no. the, the details. We have yes, a second yes. one. And I think you just read them for us because we, <laughs> we are clearly behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So wh what does this one say? It's not what you tuning that matters. Sat. It's how your raps flow when the ch when tuning. You digging me, bro? Ah. <laughs> oh, that's how you say it. Yeah. Tuning. <laughs> it's actually tuning, uh -huh. but it doesn't. That's not how it sounds. It's ch with a ch. There's, there's, so they pronounce it with a ch. It's like the way the Coppola people say "donch." <laughs> Donch. <square. You laughs> yeah. 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 Aha, that exact thing. So it's tuning. Tuning. You know. So you didn't want to hear what that means. What does this one mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you say that matters, but how you say it. That's exactly. Oh, what. it's not what you tuning that matters. Yes. Sat xa. It's how your raps flow, flow when, when tuning. tuning. Ah, so it's not what you say that matters. That but matters, how but how you, you say, say it. it. Ah, interesting. You digging me? Yeah. Uh, you understand? You understand? Absolutely. Ah. Mm -hmm. And the last one. Anyone can have a lighty, but it takes a <laughs> Makoya Bali to raise one brew. <laughs> ah, I really need to understand this one. Any man can have a child, 
Oh, a light is a child. Yeah, a light is a child. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought a light is a is a is a girl. No, light skin. Guza. Ah, a guza. Ah, oh, guza is a girl. Mm-hmm. So anyone can have a lighty. Yes. But it takes a Makoya Bali, like a, a great father. Ah. To raise one. How did you know this? Because <laughs> we used to speak this stuff. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> In your what was the group called? Uchumi Brothers. <laughs> so when we were we, when we were younger, because we'll, we used we'll put to put up we'll put up we'll put this, the, 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 picture the picture on the screen yeah, yeah. yeah Absolutely. And I'm the one sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Just letting people know. Yeah, the city. he's the one city. Cause, yeah, because people get it wrong. Right. So yeah, so so we 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 had to speak this because this was basically colored lingo as they called it. So the the original speakers of this are basically coloreds that were living in the Thorn Park earlier. So back in the day, uh, Thorn Park was colored quarters as it was mm. known. But obviously, I wasn't alive then. But in the 60s and 70s, the colored community of Zambia lived in Thorn. Okay, of Lusaka lived in Thorn Park. Okay. And so they had their own language, which if you just take a short little study of it, you actually realize it's Cape Flats English. So okay. it's actually from the Cape. So these are Cape Coloreds in South Africa ah. who have that language because it's, it's a cross between Boer, uh, Boer or Africana rather, yeah. Africana and English, but corrupted. So it's okay. almost like a pigeon. It's so like so pigeon. if you think mm. of West African pigeon, mm. yes, Cape Colored English. So that Cape Colored English, you had a number of South African and Rhodesian um, um, whites mm. who were in Zambia and, and they had that inter uh, cross pollination, if you like. Yeah. And so all the families that came or were raised in that had that switch. They now adopted. And so there are words that they took from both languages and mm. kind of created a very unique language. So mm. there's another language which I completely cannot speak, not even an idea. It's called Chilapalapa. Chilapalapa? You've heard of it? <laughs> no, I haven't. You've never heard of Chilapalapa? No. Chilapalapa. It's here locally? Well, it's no longer there. It's died out. But it's it's a language that used to be spoken by white farm owners and white mm. bosses to Africans in the 50s and 60s okay. here in Northern and Southern Rhodesia. Okay. It really became like a standout language. So, so I don't even know, I, I have no clue how to speak it, but it sounds like Nyanja, sounds like Bemba, and sounds like Africana. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it's like a mix of the three. Like yeah. Mix the three, and you get this very strange language. Okay. And it was I spoken, think I need to put some research into oh, that. Oh, you'll be amazed. Lapa Lapa, just just Google it. Okay. And so it was spoken by the white farm owners to the African workers, and then the African workers, you know, kind of had to adapt because you know it was like that language barrier. They couldn't speak Nyanja. This couldn't be, so it, it was okay. born. Yeah. Okay. But 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 by the time the second generation of whites were coming in, they had learned the local language. So this is basically 40s, 50s, 60s. But from that era, when the guy Scots were coming in, mm. they, they could speak the local oh, language. Oh, so guy Scott could probably... Oh, very well. He can speak <laughs> very good Nyanja. I don't know about Bemba. But we have a lot of Zambian whites who speak extremely fluent local languages. You'd okay. be blown away. Okay. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Better than many of us. That's, that's interesting. Mm. Uh, Rev, we are coming to the end of the program now. We are so happy <laughs> that you came and uh we want to see you here again soon i'm looking forward to call me back i, I, I hope you enjoyed no i did very much i'm looking forward to watching the episode and sharing it on my uh on, my on your socials yeah <laughs> i hope that's I hope, you language. Do, I, I, I hope you do the little you know you know those little edits they're the ones that really take off they yeah, yeah the, definitely, the definitely. Ones, we, we, we do we 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 have multiple we clip out uh, multiple ah, parts ah, of the of the show and and put them on i can on, imagine so you can yes. do a godfather one that should be fun oh yes the godfather <laughs> one rev yeah. uh impre- impersonates, impersonates vito, vito. vito. <laughs> <laughs> that should be fun <laughs> <laughs> all right if you're not subscribed please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be uh, notified whenever we Upload content again. You can find the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. For you who strangely love audio podcasts, video is uh, the way to go. All right, it has been amazing, minds. Check you all later. <laughs> hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.